All right, blockchain developers. So today I've got another video for you on how to hack smart contracts. So today I'm gonna talk about a particular security vulnerability that has compromised lots of user funds out in the real world, how you can spot it, exploit it, and then also protect yourself and others from the same type of attack. So I'm gonna go over this code step by step in this video and also look at some real world examples of this out in the wild. Of course, so that you can use these powers for good and not for evil. I'm gonna show you all this in this video today as a blockchain developer works with smart contracts on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna know how to master blockchain step by step start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's look at this vulnerability and Solidity smart contracts we're going to talk about today, and that's integer overflow. So I'm going to give you a coding example of exactly what this looks like and how you can protect yourself inside your own smart contracts and also how to look for it in other smart contracts. We're going to look at some real life examples of integer overflow out in the wild, how they've been exploited in the past. So let's go ahead and get started. So the easiest way to illustrate this is to just walk through some coding examples. So I've put some code down in the description below. This is a GitHub repository. You can just copy this URL, okay, and go to your terminal and just do git clone and then paste in the URL and that will uh, add it to your computer. So once you've downloaded that, you've entered into this newly cloned directory. What you want to do is go ahead and install your dependencies. So you can just do npm install. And then once you've installed all those, you can go ahead and open your project in your text editor. I'm using Sublime Text. You can use whatever text editor you like. So what I've done inside here is gone ahead and created a hard hat project okay, that illustrates some of this basic coding stuff. And uh, so it's got some smart contracts inside of there already. Again, hard hat is a smart contract development framework that lets you write uh, you know, smart contracts and write tests for them, scripts, put them on the blockchain, all that type of stuff. And so I've got some overflow examples in here. I'm going to go ahead and clear out all this code and just leave this basic contract in here called overflow. Okay, so we'll illustrate what this is. And then I've got some tests for this over here, which we'll fill out here in a second. All right, so inside of here, I'm gonna demonstrate integer overflow. I think that's the best way to show it is just watch it happen in real time. So the most common victim of integer overflow is the data type unsigned integer. Okay, these are used all over the place inside Solidity. You might have seen something like this inside of a smart contract before. So UNS 256, you know, uh, balance. Okay, and so what this is, it's a number, it's an integer, uh, that cannot have a sign in front of it, which means that it cannot be negative. So an example of an unsigned integer might be one, okay? So unsigned means it can't have a sign. So a minus sign is a sign, okay? So implicitly it's positive or it's zero in this case, okay? So there's all types of uints, all right? You might've also seen this as a uh, uint without the uh, 256 after that. That's the same thing as uint 256. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But here's where the problem of uh, overflow presents itself. These numbers inside Solidity have a maximum value that they can ever reach. So like UN256 uh, can only be so big before, you know, this value gets updated. And when it gets updated and it reaches its maximum value, it'll reset back to zero. So let's look at some different uh, UNs and how that would work. So there are different sizes of UNs inside Solidity. So again, this UNT, my UNT would be uh, implicit for UNT256. But you can also uh, have uints that are much smaller than that. So you can have a uint 8, all right? You can have a uh, uint 16, and you can keep stepping this value up and up and up until you get to uint 256. So each of these has a theoretical maximum value, or not theoretical, it's actually a maximum value. So uint 8, um, you know, that would be a maximum value of this. And so inside your smart contract code, if this number ever goes higher than this, it's going to get reset back to zero, Okay. So this is a major problem, especially if you're talking about storing uh, balances or any type of financial data inside of a smart contract. All right, so let me illustrate that. What I'm going to do is use some tests. All right, we're going to have a test file over here called overflow. So I'm going to open this into two columns here, say overflow.js. All right, and inside of here, I've got some test examples, but I'm going to clear these out so we can observe them uh, one by one. So over here inside of my hard hat test, I've got a basic setup where I've just imported uh, expect from chai ethers at the top. And then I have this describe function that says describe this overflow contract right here. I have a before each function in here that just deploys the contract or gets the deployed contract, I should say, and deploys it. Okay. And then here we're going to say describe uint8 because we're going to look at two, you know, several different examples based on how big the number is. 
And so for U at 8, I'm going to say it resets the value after 255. So this is going to be the maximum value that the unsigned integer can be before it reverts back to zero. So we're going to set it at 254, all right, inside of the smart contract. So again, this is a state variable. Its value is written to the blockchain, and we can just assign the value directly in line right here, okay? So what I'm going to do is create a new function to increment this value. So I'm just going to go down here and say uh, function increment my u int 8. That's the, the variable name right there. The public, and then we'll say returns bool, uh, or sorry, do like this, returns uh, bool success. And then I'll just bump this over so you can see it. So all I'm going to do inside of here is say uh, my u int uh, basically is equal to my, or say my u int 8, equal to my u int 8 plus 1. All right, but in Solidity, you can do that like this. You can just say my unit plus plus, and that's going to increment it by 1. And then we can say return true. All right, so that's all this function does is it adds 1 to the value. So over in our test, uh, we're going to do that. All right, we're basically just going to say uh, increment once. So we'll do await contract, which is right here. We After we deployed it, we'll call this function. Uh, instead of unit 16, we'll say my unit 8. All right, we'll wait for that to finish. And then uh, we're going to expect it to equal 255 because once we do it once, it's going to increment that maximum value. And then uh, we can try to increment it again, all right, just like this. And we'll observe the change and we'll watch it go back to zero. So we'll call it one more time and then we will await uh, the result and make sure that it is equal to zero, all right, just like that. So now let's uh, go on the test. You go to your terminal and do mpx hard hat test, see if it passes. All right, so immediately I'm getting contract. Uh, my unit eight is not a function, so we need to make this public. All right, so public. Basically, that means Solidity is going to expose a function for us for free, so we can actually read the value of unit eight, which we're trying to get right here. That's what it's screaming for us for. So let's try that again in px hard hat test. And boom, it passes. You can see it resets the value after 255 because here we're checking that it went to 255 after we called it once. And then here we can see it reset back to zero. Uh, we check that it's zero after we do it a second time. All right, so that's what it, an overflow looks like for a uint 8. But again, before I was saying that there's multiple types of unsigned integers that have solidity. And so you can see what the maximum values are for those and observe how overflow happens for each type. So I'll show you a way to just calculate that inside your smart contracts. So let's take a uint uh, 16, for example, say public uh, my uint 16, just like uint 8. Well, the maximum value for that is basically going to be, uh, you can calculate it like this, uh, 2 to the uh, 16. All right, that's basically just raising it to the exponent 16. And then I'm going to set to minus 2 here. So we have to subtract 2 from that value. And we're going to do the exact same thing to this we did before. So if we did it like this, it'll be at its maximum. Okay, with this, it'll be one less than its maximum, so we can call it twice and watch the overflow take place. And so we can just add a new function uh, right below this one. That will be, you know, increment my uint 16, just like we did uint 8. It's just going to add one to the value. We'll call it twice. It'll reset back to zero. You can also see this for, uh, you know, uint 256. So it's the exact same process. Uh, not that one, sorry. Uh, this one right here, uint 256. Uh, you basically take two the 256 and if you do minus one it'll be its maximum value but if we do minus two we'll call it twice and observe the change just to have an extra specification and so one thing i was saying before is you know uint 256 is the exact same thing as saying uh uint so if you call uint without a number after it it's going to default to uint 256 which you can observe in the tests uh by just you know saying two to the 256 it'll be the exact same behavior as uint 256 so you can prove that out to yourself so we'll just add some functions below that to increment this all right we'll increment uh my unit 256 and then i'll give us some extra space so you can see we'll also just increment my eu int and they will have the exact same behavior so over here on our test what we're going to do is add some new examples for un 16 so it's going to reset the value after we could say 2 to the 16 all right so we're going to increment it once increment un 16 we're going to check for it and then inside of javascript we just say 2 to the 16 minus 1 so we can do the exact same operation that we did inside of our solidity smart contract to verify that it's the same value that will be the maximum value you can you can see that right here you can also console log this if you want to receive the full full number and then we can try it again and we can watch the uh, change happen back to zero so we'll just go ahead and run a quick test on that npx hardhat test all right 
So actually, I need to save that. It didn't work. Let's try it again. You went 8, and then you went 16. You can see it resets the value after 2 to the 16. So we'll do that uh, one more time for you went 256. All right. So we'll repeat that process. Here, I'm not actually going to inspect the value a second time. I'm just going to increment it once, but then I'll increment it again and observe that it just reset back to 0. Save that. All right. We'll go here. MPX hard hat test. Okay, UN256 reverts after 2 to the 256. And then finally, let's check for uh, UNT without a number specified. Okay, just UNT. And we'll see that it has the exact same behavior of UNT256 reverting after uh, 2 to the 256. All right, save that. MPX hard hat test. And there you go. Awesome. UNT also resets after 2 to the 256. All right, so that's an example of how overflow works inside of Solidity. Now let's talk about a few things. Number one is how to protect yourself. So if you are an astute observer, you'll see that our Solidity version here is 0.5.0, okay? And also if you're in uh, the hard hat configuration, this is for version 0.5.0. So currently at the time of recording this video, we're on Solidity version 0.8. Uh, or higher, okay? And so 0 0.8 has automatically fixed the problem of uh, you know, overflow. So if you go inside of hardhat and you change this to 0 0.8, okay? And then you go to your uh, you know, contract and go to 0 0.8, all right? And you do this, NPX hardhat test, it's gonna break. All right, so you can already see this VM uh, exception while processing transaction reverted with panic code, arithmetic underflow or overflow performed. So 0 0.8 is already going to protect you from it. Um, so a couple things. If you want to still have overflow it, for some reason, you can still do unchecked, all right? And then you can, uh, you know, wrap these. And if you do that for each of your functions and you run the tests again, you will see that uh, they pass and the overflow uh, happens again. Okay, so let's talk about how to actually spot this in the wild. So for number one, this is mostly going to be a problem for older smart contracts before version Solidity 0.8. So if you're on 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, pretty common versions for Solidity. You might actually see an overflow problem out in the wild. Or if you're on 0 0.8 and you see something that's wrapped in an unchecked uh, you know, statement like this, then that could be a problem. So let's look at some examples right now. But here's an example of a real uh, overflow problem in the wild from Peck Shield. Okay, so I'll put a link to this blog post down below where there was an overflow problem in an older Solidity version uh, for some smart contracts that were sending out uh, multiple tokens. So basically, we're talking about an Ethereum-based token, an ERC-20 token that has a batch transfer function with an overflow problem inside of it. So you can see the offending function right here. It's called batch transfer. It takes an address of receivers and a value. So basically, the whole idea is you can send uh, tokens to a bunch of different people all in one go. Because, you know, if you're going to send multiple ERC-20 tokens, you might have to call the transfer or transfer from function uh, once per recipient. So let's say you had 10 recipients, you'd have to call that function 10 times. But this essentially lets you uh, send it to maybe 10 people, for example, uh, all, just with one function call. So the receivers are an array of addresses. And what it does is it takes the count, so the receiver's length, all right. But then what it does is it assumes that you're sending the same amount of cryptocurrency to every single person. So it takes the length of the array and then multiplies it by the value of the cryptocurrency that you want to send right here. And that's where the overflow vulnerability comes into place. So basically with some combination of a large number of receivers or a large value, uh, if you're able to multiply the length of these two things by the value to actually get the maximum value of UNT256 here um, and, and then overflow it to zero, you can you know effectively bypass uh, these checks right here, especially on line 259. And once they've bypassed this line, okay, and they subtract amount, and when amount has been overflowed to zero, then it's going to essentially uh, not deduct any balance from their account right here. And then the balances of the receivers would get added uh, without actually subtracting anything from the sender's balance, okay? Because value is passed in here as a function argument, but amount is calculated uh, by this amount right here. And here's an example of what that would look like. Essentially, an attacker could just send a lot of tokens to multiple addresses without having to own any tokens or that many tokens in their account in the first place. And that's an example of an overflow bug uh, in the wild. All right, so that's an overview of integer overflow inside of smart contracts, how you can spot it, how you can exploit it, and how you can also protect yourself and other people from this type of issue, okay? So as always, this information is to be used for good and not for nefarious purposes. So anyways, I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. 
That really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty and actually learn how to code uh, smart contracts, become a blockchain master, land your first blockchain job, then I can show you how to do that over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. Thought people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.